Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing and big data. Today, my guest is from Cisco. He's the distinguished engineer at the company, Ragu Nambiar. Hey, Ragu, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Rich. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. Well, well great. You know, I'm, I'm glad you could come on, Ragu. You know, it's it's been a while since we talked about TPC and these kind of benchmarks, but this is very intriguing to me, the idea of a a benchmark for big data. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, see, if you look at uh, historically, the TPC and SPEC and the other industry standard committee has uh, you know, made significant uh, contributions uh, to the to the computing industry in terms of providing objective, uh, you know, metrics and methodologies for uh, measuring performance and price performance and energy efficiency aspects of uh, you know, computing systems. Right. So now uh, the industry has uh, 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 moved on. The landscape has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, big data is uh, becoming part of uh, you know uh, uh, all major companies' uh, enterprise IT ecosystem. So there are a lot of demand from our customers for industry standard benchmarks, so that they can compare platform A versus the platform B in terms of performance, price performance, and energy efficiency. So uh, I'm here to announce, uh, you know, TPC XHS, you know, the industry's first standard for benchmarking big data systems. Well, that that's exciting. I mean, it, it, be, it seemed to me to make sense to have something where you could compare apples to apples, right, and, and know that two different systems, how they really perform uh, one versus the other. So uh, well, why don't we go into your presentation, Ragu, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. Uh, sure. The the first section, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are familiar with, but let me spend maybe like 30 seconds. You know, the big data is, uh, as I said, they're becoming a major part of uh, enterprise IT ecosystem. Significant uh, business opportunity for uh, for uh, for companies. If you look at uh, some of the IDC and you know Gartner data, you know the the, the big data technology and services market uh, you know will grow to like a 32 billion dollar business uh, in uh, by 2017. And and it will drive uh, you know another 240 billion dollars of worldwide IT spending directly or indirectly, and uh, and uh, as you know like uh, you know 64 uh, percent of uh, like uh, all the uh, uh, the major organizations have already invested in a, in, in a big data that's based on the Garden report. If you look at uh, you know typical big data IT spending, 50% of uh, that is expected to be on infrastructure, uh, 20, 21% on uh, software, and 27% on services. So what I want to highlight here is uh, the infrastructure and the software piece. Okay, that's a big chunk of your IT spending. You know, this uh, new uh, you know, big data technology is uh, like Hadoop is uh, really interesting and exciting, but our end user customers are challenged with what platform to pick, you know, in terms of uh, like uh, performance, price performance and uh, energy efficiency. So as you know, there was uh, no standard and, uh, and uh, there was uh, like uh, some chaos and uh, confusions and the claims uh, based on non-standard benchmarks. So, so the, the TPC decided to step in and de- develop uh, the first industry standard benchmark. So that's what uh, TPC XHS is. So the motivation for uh, this benchmark is uh, pretty obvious. As I said, the you know, industry landscape is changing quickly. Uh, big data Hadoop is becoming an integral part of uh, IT ecosystem. So the, the, the traditional transaction processing benchmark, so traditional data warehousing benchmark is not enough to really characterize uh, this emerging, uh, you know, the, the big data systems. Second is, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, claims from uh, by, you know, the, the vendors. I'm not discredit- discrediting any of these claims, but the challenge is these are not easily verifiable by end user customer. If you look at the overall situation, right? I mean, it is not a lot different from uh, what happened in 1980s. That basically, you know, motivated uh, the creation of uh, TPC and uh, SPEC uh, industry standard committees. So, uh, you know, in in the late 1980s, you know, there were a lot of claims based on um, 
you know, uh, vendors own benchmark and you know debit credit benchmark. You know, this my 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 system is X times better than uh, you know my competition system. So such such claims, easy not easily verifiable claims, right? You know, now we have moved on with the big data, similar claims with uh, different workloads. Another motivation for uh, you know creating this uh, the, the, the this benchmark. So another another thing is uh, you know if you look at the historically uh, the benchmark development uh, took several years, three, four, five years in in certain cases. Um, in, in today's you know, fast moving uh, industry landscape, such long benchmark development life cycles are not acceptable. If you start a benchmark, it's going to take five years. Then, you know, by the time the benchmark is out, you know, it'll be obsolete. So, what the TPC has done is, we, TPC has created the Express Benchmark uh, 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 Development Model. So, the idea is not to develop a benchmark from from scratch. Rather, if there is a workload that is popular in the industry or in the research community, pick that workload and put the TPC framework around. TPC is a very established, I would say, like one of the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, respected framework for uh, benchmarking systems, like uh, calculate the price performance. TPC has a price performance, uh, the pricing specification that, uh, you know, details how to price uh, the, the, the system. Then you have uh, energy uh, specification that will talk about uh, how do you measure energy consumption and report the energy efficiency of the of the system. And also, like a TPC has uh, um, audit rules in place. So take the workload, which is popular in the industry, popular in the industry or a research community. You put the TPC framework around and create a benchmark. Uh, so another an, an, another thing that we have decided in TPC Express Benchmark is provide a complete kit so that way vendors uh, you know, don't have to like uh, invest in developing uh, you know their own kit. You know if, if you look at other benchmarks the like TPCC TPCH TPC is providing a specification. It's a it's a relatively high lift for a vendor to you know implement that the the, the, the benchmark uh, you know. To publish uh, uh, the TPC TPC.org. Here we are providing a full kit. And uh, another thing is, uh, you know, uh, historically all the TPC benchmarks must be audited by independent auditor before you publish the benchmark. Okay, audit process could be, you know, pretty expensive. So what we have done is, uh, you, you can go with the independent audit process or a peer review process. Okay, before the benchmark is published, some of your peers uh, would be, you know, reviewing the benchmark. And uh, and uh, you know, uh, once the benchmark is published, uh, you know, TPC fair use uh, policies uh, will apply. You know, what can be compared, uh, you know, what cannot be compared, uh, uh, things like that. You know, uh, there are uh, a couple of uh, unique uh, things uh, about this benchmark. One is, uh, you know, of course, uh, the express uh, benchmark uh, 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 track. So with that track, we are able to deliver this benchmark in uh, in uh, six to nine months. Okay. So the the, the whole initiative started within uh, the CPC uh, last year, of, uh, uh, actually June July time frame, and in October 2013, we created a working group to evaluate you know, you know various uh, uh, big data workloads that is used by you know uh, each in the industry and research community and the committee com uh, the committee uh, basically decided to pick terasort workload as the base for a tpc access benchmark a formal committee was formed in february 2014 and we are able to deliver this benchmark uh, uh, now it was uh, uh, voted in as industry standard benchmark uh, uh, end of uh, July last month, and we will be making the formal announcement uh, uh, next uh, Monday. And uh, of course, uh, you know, TPC will continue to work on uh, other benchmarks as uh, what we have done in the past. You know, the objective is uh, very clear. Uh, we want to uh, provide uh, you know methodologies and the metrics uh, so that uh, you know. Uh, uh, systems uh, can be fairly uh, 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 compared, 
And as we, say, as we have seen historically, you know, I envision that, you know, this benchmark will enable healthy competition between the vendors and, and, and will result in, um, you, know, you know, improvement of, uh, like, uh, products that we have today and also, like, uh, evolution of uh, new products and the technologies. At the end of the day, the, the, the end user customers are going to significantly benefit from uh, the from these standards. Okay, a uh, couple of things here. Uh, one is uh, uh, for this uh, particular benchmark, uh, we have uh, taken a stepped scale factor model, very similar to what we have in uh, TPCH and TPCDS. Uh, the test sponsor must pick a, a fixed scale factor from one terabyte, three terabyte, 10 terabyte, 30 terabyte up to um, a, a, a 10 petabyte and, uh, and run the benchmark for that particular scale factor, okay? And, uh, you know, and, and uh, you can only compare benchmarks at the same uh, scale factor. You can compare a 10 terabyte benchmark with another 10 terabyte benchmark, and the TPC disallow a comparison of a 10 terabyte benchmark with a 1 terabyte benchmark. So there are three primary metrics. First one is price performance metric. So basically, uh, it is the effective sort of throughput of the system under test. There are basically like five components. One is the data generation, uh, pre-data validation, sorting, post-data validation, and uh, and uh, the complete uh, completed data validation, the five steps. So uh, you know, repeatability is very important for uh, these benchmarks. So what what we have done is uh, you know what we have decided. The part of this uh, specification is that uh, the vendors will have to run the complete workload two times and pick the slower run. Okay, and both, uh, you know, run one and run two will be reported in the full disclosure report. Uh, second metric is a uh, metric is a uh, price performance metric. Uh, it is uh, you know, pretty obvious, uh, you know, the, the, the total cost of ownership uh, uh, for um, hardware and software plus three year, 24 by seven, four hour response time support. Uh, I, I divide that by the performance metric. Uh, the third is uh, availability date. Uh, 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 when all the components of the system under test are generally available. Uh, when, as per the TPC policy, all the components that is uh, used, the benchmark must be orderable the day one, but the availability date could be within 60 days. In a TPCX benchmark, the kit uh, uh, will be provided by the TPC. As I mentioned before, the kit will include the return specification, uh, user guide how to implement this benchmark. If you are new to uh, Hadoop and uh, new to you know, TPCX HS, uh, and a bunch of scripts to execute the benchmark and the Java code to really run the benchmark workload. So as I mentioned before, uh, the, the the benchmark includes uh, energy uh, efficiency metric, but it is uh, optional to publish uh, energy efficiency metric. That's what we have in other other TPC benchmarks too. That's all I have uh, uh, today. Rich, any questions? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, Raghu, I was going to ask you about the uh, the nature of this algorithm, the sort uh, that you're using. Um, if someone had an extremely fast I/O system. Would they have an advantage, or you know, how how does how do those things play off each other in terms of cost and, and speed? Yeah, I mean, uh, TerraSort is a pretty popular workload, popular uh, benchmark uh, workload that is uh, part, in fact, part of the Apache open source uh, distribution. So there are three stages in in in, in TerraSort. One is the data generation. Okay, if you pick a scale factor uh, of 10 terabyte, you, know, you create uh, you know 10 terabyte of, uh, of data. Okay, so you could you could look at that as a, like a bulk uh, you know uh, insert or uh, the capability of the system to write large amounts of uh, data. Second phase is uh, 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 sort. You know, you know you read the data, sort the data, and write the data back. And the third major phase is the validate. You scan through all the you know the data and make sure that it is in the sorted order. 
so so we are giving equal we, we are considering all the three major uh, uh, phases part of the elapsed time so so the overall metric uh, you know i think it is uh, a good measure of uh, your uh, your uh, um, io sub system compute system as well as connectivity plus you know you have to run a distributed file system uh, that is uh, uh, hadoop compatible so it is going to measure the performance of the file system as well so i, I see as a good balance of uh, you know uh, the 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 hardware subsystems and the software subsystem mm -hmm. and then as far as the scale of this ragu i mean it, what if my system was really good at say uh, multiple petabytes how would this factor in with with the scale factor that you guys are using? You know, right now, uh, you know, we, we we support from one terabyte to up to ten petabyte. Okay, uh, but uh, we are not going to stop there. I mean, we are going to uh, reevaluate. Uh, you know, the larger scale factors, maybe like uh, thirty petabyte and hundred petabytes, and even even higher uh, in the in, in the coming years. And also, like uh, we might uh, consider retiring some of the s smaller scale factors. Uh, you know, right now, you know, the largest scale factor we have is a 10 petabyte, and uh, I think it is going to cover probably like 95 percent of the systems. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that is available out there. You know, on which you could run a, a single, you know, distributed uh, file system image. Yeah. And, and one, one more thing you want to you want to factor here is uh, you know we are mandating a three-way replica, uh, so uh, so that uh, you know the some of the fault tolerance aspect that Hadoop is uh, bringing on the table is uh, you know included in this benchmark. So so basically, if you want to if you want to uh, benchmark uh, uh, at uh, one terabyte, so you need uh, uh, six terabyte of storage capacity because the the source and the output, the, the input and the output, both must be three replicated. So, Regu, I mean, I mean, obviously, Cisco is in the business of of moving data, uh, um, and and what's what's the company's interest in having you know people like you work work on on these kinds of benchmarks? I mean, does it just is, does it help them in the sales process to have have a, a good, um, effective uh, um, measure for these kind of systems? You know, or what? Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at the Cisco, right? Uh, you know, you know, the 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 the, the, the we, we we are a big part of the internet revolution, right? I mean, you yeah. know, yeah. Cisco, ECPSP, and and if you look at now, the big data and Internet of Things are becoming a major push uh, from Cisco side. Okay, not only on the innovation side, okay, but also on like uh, developing a ecosystem with the uh, with with the uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the strategic players in the space. I mean that that's a that's a that's a, that's a bigger picture. But uh, you know we have a server business too. You know that right? You see a unified computer system. I'm part of that. So I'm wearing uh, two hats. One is uh, you know representing uh, you know Cisco. Um, Second is, uh, you know, as a chair of the this industry standard committee, I'm wearing my industry standard hat, so that you know whatever we develop uh, is, uh, you know, vendor neutral. That's great. That's great. So, so just to review, Rego, this 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 benchmark will be available. What you said next week for uh, for people to to download and and to start working with. Yeah, we are going to make a formal announcement on August 18th, uh, and uh, the benchmark specification and the kit will be available at uh, tipsy.org. Very good. Well, Ragu, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Hey, absolutely. Thanks uh, for the opportunity, Rich. <laughs> you bet. All right, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data.